lost their grant for school resource officers. So, you know, as I was reading the transcript, and, you, you know, we read about the increase in teenage drinking in our community, and then I noticed several um, issues with domestic violence where teenagers are in, involved. Um, you know, and then we learned that our school resource officers, that they lost the grant, they're not in the classroom with kids, they, they will continue to work with the teachers and providing them with information. Um, the cooperative effort is still there. They um, still participate in the youth at risk. Um, but it is something we need to realize that it's no longer that we don't have them coming in and doing the education. And in the past, what I really found unique about the middle school resource officers is the moment we had an issue, we would ask them to change their lesson plan to address that issue. Now, one year it was kids in the sixth grade with huffing, and immediately they went in and they taught classes and they educated the teachers. Um, when they thought there might be some gang activity, they educated the teachers on the kind of graffiti to look for in the kids' books. They were in the classroom talking to the kids about the consequences. We don't have that connect this year and it's most likely not going to find its way into any budget next year. Now, um, the officers, of course, will actively go after any grant, but that's just another area that has been cut at the state level and trying to stay within their available funds. Um, but I think it's important for us to know as a school community that that's something that we've lost. Um, and if you watch the police blotter, and you have your ear to the community, you'll start to see the repercussions of that. So, I just wanted to bring that to you. Can we reduce the number of police officers involved in the town? I think we really need to um, proactively work with the Board of Selectmen to see how we can get time in their budget. Um, but, yeah. uh, this, this, is, this is still town. This is still a part of the town. It would, would seem like that yeah, would be you know, a part of the, the activity of the police department. They must have been using the grant to pay them overtime, I would assume, to participate in this program, or? Yeah, I'm not really sure how that yeah. fell into their budget, how they used But I'm thinking that money. they don't have the money to support the program. That's what they're correct. Right. Yeah. So we, yeah. You, we need I'd to do, like, we do need to speak with them yes. and see what we can do to and you're right, I don't think it was part of their regular shift because right. I know Mike would come in the morning and he had just gotten off the night shift, so it was additional time. Um, and then I'm just going to distribute to you, but I'll give it to you later, um, something that I got from um, one of the school resource officers, Tom Hatch, and, and they talked to me on the coffee. We have a memorandum of understanding between our school department and the police department as it pertains to our new security cameras. And the police department also have a, a policy for us to review that how do they interpret our memorandum agreement and how do the officers then proceed to use our security to aid them. So I have copies of those. Um, Officer Hatch asked me to share with the committee um, and Dr. Manville is going to go over it with his administrative team and so that we're all on the same page when we're using school security. So, all right. Dr. Bamville, the next item is the chairlift at the middle school. Chairlift at the middle school, thank you. Um, Mr. Fouchere came to see me, and he understands that this is uh, a little bit out of the ordinary, but uh, as you know, he's reorganized the middle school, and um, so he's got the sixth grade is upstairs. Uh, it's a completely the school within a school for the sixth grade, seventh and eighth grade are, are intermingled downstairs. Uh, there's a different bell schedule. It, it's really created a situation for the sixth grade that we think is going to be, result in a much stronger learning experience. But next year, he, has, he is aware of at least one fifth grader coming up who cannot navigate the stairs and he doesn't have a way 
to get that person upstairs, which means what he probably would do is put the person in the two two teacher team, move the two teacher team downstairs, which means some seventh graders have to move upstairs. And uh, so what he asked me if I would ask the committee to look at is putting a garavanta, I'm using the word garavanta, but putting a chairlift in the uh, middle school, which would take care of this incoming fifth grader and also if there's a child who breaks a bone or for some reason or other can't navigate the stairs for even for a small period of time during the year rather than move all the classes around, Charlie can work on the Um I asked him to get get an idea of what the price would be. It's been years since I've had anything to do with chairlifts. Um, and so I think attached to the memo that you have in, in your packet, there is, in fact, some information from, uh, and, and a quote from Garavant. And I guess I have to hasten to say right now that this is no, they don't have any inside track, they just happen to be around, and they gave John a quote. We know that uh, absent these guys being on the state bid list, we don't know if they are or not, we would have to go out and get three quotes and go through the whole process, so we, we, we understand that. Okay, they're not, so we would have to do that. Um, but he would just like the committee to, to uh, think about it and consider perhaps um, adding to your budget or somehow or other funding a chairlift for the school. I will tell you that um, in one of my uh, previous lives, uh, I was a high school principal, and um, New England Association of, of Schools and Colleges came in and would not give me the, uh, uh, you know, I said we're not handicap accessible, and we're not going to be handicap accessible because of the way the building was built. And, and uh, so it's, you know, it's something that I think you have to look at positively, and I think it's something that you really should consider because it's, it, it's the building is going to have to be handicap accessible. And I know that if we get the building process, we're going to be handicap accessible because of elevators and escalators, and, and uh, I particularly like the jacuzzi on the fourth floor. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Newton North High School. You have that. You yeah. was mistaken with oh. North. Yeah. Yeah. North. Yeah, North ready. Right, North. North. Yeah, so you I gotta, understand. You gotta I'm stuff. sorry, I lost my head there for a second. Um, but it's, 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 it's something that you might want to think about. I think this is just one more example. You know, we've had a school here for 50 years, or however many years, 45 years. It has no no elevator, no access to the second floor. How did we do it? How, how was that school built? How was the school built without, I guess it wasn't required back then. It was not no. required, no. So you have a kid coming to the school next year, and if this chairlift doesn't exist, then that kid is deprived of participating in the true sixth grade experience because they have to somehow rearrange the entire school so that the kid can can learn properly. And and, and again, it's thirty. The, the bid we have is over thirty one thousand dollars, which is money we don't have. But this is obviously something we should have in this school. Should, should this have gone on? I was just going to say, should this have been on the small cap? Uh, you know, John. I believe John wants to do this. Well, he needs to do it in the summer. Small cap or large cap? I, you know, first I, my heart breaks that we have a student that just can't be like all the other students that come in mm -hmm. and go to the assigned classes. But if what we're going to ask John to do is to bring the sixth grade down to the first floor, then I think we need to ask him to do that to accommodate the student. So he's part of all the sixth grade experience, not just a single team. Um, I know it's disruption. But it feeds the purpose of having the 7th and 8th grade together and the 6th grade it, in their you know, own if learning it, experience. Until we get the building project, that's what we're asking the kids. We asked a building full of bachelor students to go to Stoneham for two years. That's what they dealt with so that they could have a beautiful school in the end. So if for a couple of years we're going to have to make some changes, then that's something I can live with. You know, we're also living with other issues in the school that impact all the students, air quality. Let me ask you a question. So say we move the eighth grade upstairs and an eighth grade kid breaks his leg skiing. Then what, what do we, then he can't, then the kid can't go upstairs for, he can't make his way upstairs for three weeks, say, or four. Right. I, then we those should have this in the school. That's what I'm saying. I, yes, absolutely, 100%. And we have some modulus that we would have to rearrange too. And I don't like having to 
to rearrange. I wish we could accommodate every student with or without special needs. But we're going to ask the community to go along with us for what could be a $70 million project. And in the interim, we're going to have to put up with some things. We're not going to ask the student to put up with anything. We're going to ask John to move his classes to the first floor to accommodate the sixth grade. And I think we can ask that of John and the staff. It's not an imposition to the students. All right, I'm, I'm going to make a motion that we add this to the large capital. I'd like to make a motion that we add, add this to the large capital and put in an amount of $35,000 to cover the costs, even though I hear what you're saying. I, 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 large cap is a fine place. So if we add that to the large cap that we've already requested, it gives us an opportunity to... Well, that'll be on a separate warrant. Right, right. and it would right. be bonded, probably, right. with everything else. So that, that's, I'd like to do it yeah. that way. I uh, agree, that's not budget. in our budget. Right. I just don't want to jeopardize no, those textbooks in our budget. No, I agree. So, so we have we, a motion and a second? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. How much should we put in? 35. 35, okay, thank you. Okay. But I, I, just to get back to that point, I mean, I, I agree, we don't want to take things out of it, but this is just another one of those things that we, we probably should have had 20 years ago here. Exactly. Yes. And mm -hmm. you, you put kids at risk on running crutches on the stairs right. in, a, in, in the the herd operation that the bell. <laughs> and it is a creative solution. We've right. Lucky. We've been lucky. Exactly. Yeah. It's it's not an elevator right. um, being Which built on the exterior. Walk. It's a chairlift. Right. So. Plus in a couple of years of Cliff and I have to go to the second floor. Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's right. Where it comes in. <laughs> all right. Okay. So build some payroll. We're all set. Yeah. Minutes. I on the minutes, there was one thing um, on the second page of the regular meeting. Um, the, the first, uh, the first paragraph there, not under secondary school building committee. Before that, the last sentence says, "Dr. Manville, Mr. Venezia, and Mr. Bowers met with Brad Dor of Dor and Whittier to garner further information about." Them. Did that? I'm confused. There was there a meeting? Yeah. So you had met you had met with him beforehand. Yeah, we met. We met. Okay, uh, I, thought, I thought it was referring to a future meeting. We're no, no, we, no, we met with Brad uh, okay. a couple weeks ago. Yeah. All right, and then the only other thing I had is um, on page four it says executive session. We voted to go to executive session, but then on the top of page five it says Dr. Manville presented proposed changes to the high school handbook and discussion followed. No action was taken by the committee. Oh. Shouldn't that be before the executive session? Yeah, one's under some. No. Did you? Because we'll remember we went into executive session. Oh. We adjourned from oh, executive session. Oh, that's right. Session, and, and remember and that? Then I and and after that's after executive session. Okay. We were back in open session. Yes, of course. No, you weren't here. Yeah. You weren't here. So you that was, that's right. That so it was executive session, and then we came back into open session. Yep. And I remember that now. Keith discussed the proposed changes to the high school, to the high school right. handbook. Okay. Never mind. So the, meet, the minutes are, unless anybody else has something. No, make a motion. Make a motion to approve the minutes for the open session of February 2010. Sure. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. Okay. Executive session. And I'll also make a motion to approve the minutes of the executive session for February, February, February 8, 2010 as written. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. Abstain. Okay. Um, budget update. Carl, do you have? Yes, this is the monthly budget update, and I really don't have too much to report to. I think that's good news. This has been a, a year that has uh, so far had no problem surprises that have manifest themselves. Special education has been very close to budget. Um, we went into this year, of course, uh, knowing what our salary costs are going to be, so uh, we have have any salary pool issues. Um, uh, so far, uh, the areas in the budget that are showing uh, the possibility of uh, leftover funds would be the legal area, because both in special education and in the superintendent's office, there hasn't been a great deal of legal costs.